Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Invera at the Board. Today, we're going to be talking about calculating air emissions from a specific piece of equipment. Now, when it comes to air emissions, people have this misconception that calculating air emissions is a long and tedious process with long and complicated equations. And while it's somewhat true, uh, we, we have cases here where the emission calculations can take pages and pages and pages and then we have to use a computer program to model the emissions at the end, most times calculating air emissions can be boiled down to a simple equation and we call it the general equation for calculating air emissions. And it's provided here in red and that simply, this general equation simply tells us that the air emissions from any piece of equipment is equal to the activity rate times the emission factor times the control efficiency. And if we have all three of those components, then we can calculate our emission rate for a single piece of equipment. And so in this video, I want to go through each of these four components with you so you have a better idea of how to calculate emissions from a single piece of equipment or from a large complicated process and that way you'll be better prepared to calculate emissions for your upcoming annual emission report for the South Coast Air Quality Management District. Let's get started. So let's talk about E. E is the emission rate, it's the desired value or the value that you're after when you do these types of calculations. Now because the way that the equation is set up, this equation really gives you emissions from one process or one piece of equipment. And so if you had a complex facility with multiple pieces of equipment and then multiple processes, then you would do this same calculation for each piece of equipment, each piece of each process, and then you would sum across all the equipment, you would sum across all the processes, and then you will total at the bottom to get the emissions from the overall facility. And so the important thing here is that you recognize that this general equation is for one piece of equipment or one process. Now moving on, it's important to note that the amount emitted and the types of pollutants emitted by a specific process or by a specific piece of equipment will vary from equipment to equipment, from process to process. So as an example, if you have a storage tank with gasoline, then you're only going to you should only see emissions of organic compounds because those are the evaporative losses from the gasoline being stored in the tank. On the other hand, if you have a boiler or an engine, then combusting fuel should result in combustion contaminants. It makes sense. You're combusting fuel, you're going to get combustion contaminants. Combustion contaminants include NOx, SOx, Volt organic compound, CO, and particulate matter. As a third example, if you have, say, a flour silo, then you shouldn't see emissions of VOCs because there are no evaporative emissions from that process. Rather, you would see emissions of particulate. And that goes with, you know, if you had a process like a brine silo holding salt in it, then you should only see emissions of particulate matter from it. Now on the other hand, if you had a bulk loading system loading organic material, then obviously you should only expect to see emissions of organic compounds. And so, like I said, the amount emitted and the types of pollutants emitted by these processes differ from equipment to equipment. Now the units of, the units of E are typically mass per time. And that could be pounds per day, pounds per hour, pounds per month, pounds per year. The per time or the denominator of the, the emission or the E value will depend on the sort of length or duration that you're looking at. And that's actually tied to A. But what we typically see is that for pounds per day, pounds per hour, you're typically dealing with permits. And so permitting and permit applications would require you to calculate pounds per day, pounds per hour. On the other hand, an annual emission report would require you to calculate emissions pounds per year. Now, like we said here, the denominator here is very important because that ties to A or the activity. And so let's talk about the activity next. 
The activity is really a measure of how active a piece of equipment is. Now, there are various ways that you can actually calculate the activity or you can quantify the activity of a piece of equipment. You can use material process, either raw material or finished product. You can use the elapsed time, how many hours or how many minutes or how many seconds has this thing been operating. Or you can, you can base it off the amount of fuel that's consumed per unit time. So if your unit of measure is one month, the activity would be how much fuel was consumed by this piece of equipment in that one month time period. In another case, if, you, if you're looking at emissions on an annual basis, you would want to, and you want to know what's the emissions from this boiler on a per year basis, then you would look at the total amount of fuel from that consumed by that boiler over a one year time period and then you would determine you would take that number to be the activity for that one year period. Now that being said, the units of activity are provided in are given an activity unit per unit time. So that's pounds per day, million cubic feet per hour, hours per month. And now what you should what you should keep in mind is that the the denominator of the activity here actually will determine uh, the unit, the unit measure here in the emissions, and that's because that's just the way that the units work. And I'll show you an example at the end. And so, A again is the activity of that piece of equipment, and again, it's really quantifying the the activity or how much or how active is that piece of equipment. The next piece here is the emission factor EF. The emission factor here is arguably the part of the one simple equation here that can take the most time to develop. It's a factor that relates the activity of the process to the amount and type or the types and amounts of pollutants emanating from that process. Now, the units of an emission factor are always mass per activity unit and so again here it's relating, you know, EF is relating back to activity. What we saw here is activity is relating back to emissions. And so you have to be absolutely sure that the units cancel out. And so what we typically see is that the units of an emission factor can be pounds of NOx per million cubic feet of natural gas combusted. That million cubic feet of natural gas combusted is the activity unit. We can also have an emission factor that's pounds of VOC per kilogram of plasma process. Again, that kilogram of plasma process is the activity unit, or pounds of socks per pound of trash process. You get the point. Now, one of the big questions when it comes to uh, emission factors is where can you find these emission factors? Or how do you determine these emission factors? And in practice, there are four accepted ways that we use to determine these emission factors. And number one, you can simply look them up in a table. Uh, AP42 is a very big database, a very well-known database of emission factors. You can also go to agency websites or of uh, local, state, federal agencies and look through their databases to look for emission factors. You can look at MSDS sheets. Sometimes there'll be an emission factor there. Equipment specification, you can go to back to a trade organization. And so there are many different ways that you can find or you can simply look up an emission factor on a table. Another way is you can do an engineering calculation, and this one is a little bit more detailed, but you can do it. Um, and if, when you're doing an emission calculation, you're simply using your knowledge or experience with that piece of equipment or process and generally accepted engineering principles to sort of calculate what the emissions are. You can do a mass balance where you just assume that everything goes in, comes out. And the best example of that is calculating SOX from the combustion of diesel fuel by an engine. And so if we know that the SOX or the sulfur concentration in diesel fuel is 0.15 parts per million, then we know that for every unit of diesel fuel combusted, if all of that sulfur is converted to SOX, then we know how much SOX is being emitted out the stack. And then lastly, you can do a measurement or a source test. Um, where, and actually during a source test, you would actually have a company come out and actually measure the emissions from your piece of equipment when that piece of equipment is in operation. Generally speaking, what we see is that 
the measurement seems to be the most accurate and the engineering calculation seems to be the least accurate, but also the measurement seems to be the most expensive and simply looking up the emission factor on a table seems to be the least expensive. And so there's a trade-off between accuracy and cost that you have to balance when selecting the way that you're going to find or determine your emission factor. So, check. The third, the third component here in our calculation is control. And a control is simply the ability of a device to alter or lower or control the, piece, the emissions from a piece of equipment. These values are typically expressed as a percent, 70%, 90%, 98%, 99.9%. And to determine these, these, these control factors, you have to do it by testing. And you would test how much, what, what, how much pollution is going in, how much pollution is coming out. You take the ratio, and then you would know that that control device or that piece of technology can control these emissions by a certain number. Now, the actual number will depend on a number of things, technology, equipment, meteorological conditions, uh, process, there's a whole number of things that can determine the actual control efficiency. And they differ from technology. And so an afterburner controlling VOC would have a different control efficiency than a, um, an SCR unit for NOx and um, a bag and filter house for particulate and then a wet scrubber from SOx. And so, the type of control technology that you have employed is important to know, number one. And then number two, how effective is that, uh, how effective is that control technology in controlling emissions of that one particular uh, pollutant is, is the second piece that's important to know. Now, sometimes a control factor of one can be used, and, and we see that quite often. And when you, when, when you have a control factor of one, that really means that there is no control, but then the, the emission factor is a controlled emission factor. And so the numbers, you know, the control value and the emission factor are kind of grouped together. Now, in order to know if you can use a control emit factor of one, it's important to understand your emission factor and sort of the history uh, of that emission factor, what were all the details that went into deriving that emission factor, and if indeed that emission factor is a controlled value or not. And so you really need to know the specifics about your emission factor. And so with that, we've, we've sort of deconstructed the general formula for, for calculating air emissions. And the last thing I wanted to do is I wanted to show you how the units work. And so typically, like we said here, the units are, are percent. And so they're going to be unitless. And so the way that this works is that this will be unitless. This will be, uh, it's probably better to write it here. So E will be, like we said, mass per time. A will be, like we said, activity unit per time. So let's just put that there. EF. The units of your EF will be mass per activity unit. And then control, we said, was unitless. And so if we just do the math here, we can see, and we cancel the units, we can see that activity cancels with activity unit this is unitless, therefore you have mass per time. And this is important because when you start to get to some of these more elaborate ways to derive an emission factor, you want to make sure that your units are correct. And more importantly, when, when, doing, when calculating emissions, you want to be sure that your activity and the emission factor are in the right units to get, to get everything to cancel out. You don't want to be multiplying million cubic feet by pounds and you get some weird number and some artificially high number and then you end up paying tons of fees on your emission report because you, your units didn't cancel. That's a big no-no. And so with that, 
hopefully we've demystified the way to calculate air emissions and hopefully equipped you with the knowledge that you can go back and prepare your annual emission report, which is coming up in a couple of months, being that we're at the end of the year now. So till next time, take care.